Okay. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking about my last uh, couple of videos that I posted, and, you know, I'm, I got away from my normal content, which is to cover computer programming. And so today I wanted to get back to do some programming. Because, uh, you know, programming is, that's my area, that's my specialty, that's what I was, that's the work I did as a professional, and um, I, I enjoy it, actually, and it's kind of like a video game for me. But, um, and then I, but I'm, uh, of course, interested in these other topics, so I, I like to, you know, I gave my, I gave a shot at trying to do uh, some discussion and coverage of topics outside of computer programming and um, yeah, I'm okay with that but uh, you know I've listened to other people's podcasts people that are experts in those areas that I I discussed you know like banking I'm, I'm very curious about banking and uh, the currency system although you know I did some work as an academic on electronic currency some time ago so I I have some legitimacy to discuss that topic a bit but nevertheless I today I wanted to get back to programming and just kind of enjoy myself because what's happening in the world and, and what's happening in my personal life as well you know we're all embedded in this world and it's um, can be uh, depressing and and I really a lot of the time I just want to be entertained I want to have fun and one of the ways I have fun is um, is coding. So that's what I want to do today. So I had this idea that uh, I was going to make a get back to this Canvas app, you know, using uh, the Chrome web browser. This thing is awesome, I think, you know, I know Google is a kind of an evil company. But man, this their web browser is just uh, incredible. And with the built-in development tools, I'm just fascinated with them. And I, I really only use a small portion of what's available in those development tools. I, I really only go to maybe two, three, four tabs, you know, of options. And uh, there's so much more in there. And I'm not going to get to that. I'm just going to do, you know, I'm older and I'm retired and I just want to have fun. And uh, so I'm just going to do this for fun. But today, I, I had this idea I was going to create a website using the, my Canvas app concept. So I'm going to develop a Canvas app today. And um, I'm going to see how that goes. So let's see. I think I have this recording. Let me see. That's, uh, I mean, I better check this. Okay, I got to check that. It stop recording. So it looks like it's working. Okay, I'll just go with that. So uh, I like to work at the git bash um, command prompt here. So I already created a folder I called um, my little website. And I was thinking about, I don't even know if that's available as a, as a URL. So I was thinking about getting that and just kind of putting out stuff, you know, my little website. And it's just going to be little dinky experiments that I do, you know, and um, so I'm going to focus on animations. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use uh, sound. I do like to use sound, but the browsers, especially the uh, Macintosh or iPhone-based uh, browser systems, don't handle sound very well, and I think that's done on purpose. So audio, audio is interesting. I did a lot of work on audio, and I can get it to work on Apple products, but um, it's it's never fully satisfying but i think something like my chromebook i think i can the stuff that i develop will probably run very well on chromebook although i don't have a chromebook well that's that's my background so here we got uh let me see let me do get status here did i even create no i don't have a repository so i'm going to start this up this is how I start a project. You know, I just get that idea, my little website. Okay, I'm going to do a Canvas app. That means it's going to have some cute little animations, basically. And then whether I add in audio or not, I'll decide later. I'll probably add it in, you know. And I'll, maybe I'll target uh, 
Chromebooks and maybe I'll get a Chromebook, you know, because I, I do need a new computer system. I'm not sure the Chromebook is good enough, but we'll see. So anyway, uh, here I'm going to do, uh, I'll probably put this on GitHub. So uh, that means I'll, I'll use a docs directory and uh, use that to um, publish the app uh, through uh, GitHub. What do they call it? GitHub Pages, right? And so let me uh, go git init. So I'm going to initialize the repository. And uh, now when I do status, then I got that uh, on master branch, no commits yet. So I'm going to create the um, my git ignore file. Git ignore. And um, let's see, what am I going to I'll remove uh, anything that ends with SWP. So that's the swap files. I use VI a lot, so I'll just ignore swap files. And uh, maybe I'll omit other things later on, but that's it for now. And look here, when I do git status, it shows git ignore, but it doesn't show the docs folder. So, um, you know, to get that folder in there, I need to put a, um, a file in there. So I'm going to put an index.html in there. And, um, you know, there we go. Just hi. And uh, let's see. And I've got, uh, I got some other stuff. Let me do this. I'm going to copy from uh, my main uh, homepage website there. Uh, my git ignore, not git ignore, what's it called? Oh yeah, the my script for um, for launching uh, a web server. See, you, you need if you if you load if you develop your scripts outside of this, your HTML file, then uh, you need to do your development using uh, you know a locally running web server. Otherwise, it won't work. So you don't need this if you keep everything inside index HTML, uh, which I could do. Um, but things get big and then it, it's messy and then you end up having to do this anyway. So let's, uh, let me take a look at this W file. So I use NPX to launch uh, an HTTP server. This is a, the package in NP, what do they call it? I can remember the package manager for uh, all right, so git status package manager for node. Holy cow, man, I'm getting old. So I'll just add these in there. Oops. And I'm committed in there just, just to get things rolling. I never use a message, so I just put in X all the time. And um, there we go. So then I run this W that launches the web server. And it also it opens up... Um, the site in the web browser, I think. Maybe it doesn't do that. What the heck? What's that? So I do that in another. I got another project. What is that other project called? What the heck? Oh, there it is. It did open up. Why did that open up? NPX server docs. Somehow that opened up. I don't know why that, why did that just open up by itself? What the heck? Why did that just open by itself? I don't know. That is a mystery. And uh, so I just um, used a hotkey on that. Control shift um, J. And down here, what's new? Let me see what's new. Override HTTP response headers in the network paddle panel. Oh, that's interesting. Better debugging. I wonder what that is. I don't use the debugger that much. I sometimes I do. New settings in the console. New settings accepting autocomplete suggestions and pressing enter and more. Hmm. Don't think I'm going to read about those. Here's the console. Console is good. You press uh, escape. And how come that console is not coming up like that? Maybe I have to go to sources, see, there. So if I escape, toggles the console on and off. So that hotkey is, is very convenient. Oh, spacebar, that was the name of the... I was 
using a folder called spacebar. Let me see what's in there. I'll just do it right here. What's inside spacebar? Nothing? What the heck? Well, it must not be there anymore. So anyway, uh, let's remove that baby. And then I'm going to add a new folder. And that's going to be... What's it going to be? Oh, it's, yeah, it's on the desktop. And then it's my little website. There we go. And then I got to say that, yes, I need to allow. And here we go. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Probably most of this, I'm just going to go full screen. So here's the docs folder. Here's my index. Git ignore, that's in there. Okay, and W, right. Oh yeah, I don't need, I, want the, I don't want the whole folder. No, no, no. Remove, what's, what the heck? I want to remove that, remove folder. I want to add the docs folder, not the whole folder. I don't need to see that other stuff. Just the docs folder. There it is, index. So here I want to um, start doing this, this canvas. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a canvas. And um, in this canvas, should I give it an ID? Maybe we'll do it an ID. ID equals uh, canvas. Let me do that. And, um, you know, that puts, actually, that goes into the global namespace. It's kind of a cheat, something that every browser supports, but I'm going to use it, I guess. And then I'll go ahead and load the um, script. Script. And what is it? Type. I can't remember. Is it type equals... Uh, module is that it? I can't remember now. Type equals module, and then um, source equals. I don't know. What am I going to call it? Index dot js. So give it the same name as the. Um, and this is weird. You can't close it. You have to do it like that. Give it the same name as the HTML file. And then um, I'll need that file. Can I create a file here? Oh, yeah, look at that. New file. Index.js. Here it is. And uh, in here, um, yeah, I'll just check it. Just check this. Alert. Uh, okay. Here we go. So when that loads, and when it loads, it, it executes. Okay, so that's what happens. So this should run and execute that. And... Uh, so if I reload this, what do I get? There's the OK. So step at a time. So it didn't complain about this module. So I guess I got that right. And uh, where's that? There's the toggling this console. That's very convenient, the console. And um, so what I want to do is I want to see what this, this canvas, um, you know, the canvas is going to have basically the canvas the canvas comes up as a watch this if I just do this uh, canvas the, the name canvas this ID puts canvas in the global namespace look at that can you believe it and then so um, I'm gonna do canvas dot uh, what is it width I think width equals um, say 300 is that a number is that a number and then uh, canvas dot height equals uh, I'll do 400 just to show that it's different and then um, I want to fill that in I there's a like a context here so I'm going to do uh, the context uh, CTX so most people use that hmm. ah, drinking a coffee so to get the canvas you pull that out of the canvas and there's two different kinds of context there's the 3d and then there's the TV, TD so a 2D rather canvas. What is it? Get 2D. I can't remember now. 
So I'm going to try uh, doing that in the um, in the browser window. Can I do that? I'm trying to remember. I think I can do that right in here, right? So um, canvas dot with 300. Look at that. See that? So if I do a canvas, see, I can't remember stuff, but I can use this. What is it? Get? Is it get context? I can't remember. How, how do I list out the contents of canvas here? I want to know the, um, the uh, what's the function that you use on the canvas element? I guess I'll just look it up. I can't remember. Get the 2D context, get context 2D, something like that. Get context 2D. All right. HTML canvas element. And uh, let me do this. Uh, Mozilla. I can't remember now. What's, where do I usually go? Maybe this one is good. So here we have the property, get context, that's in, it's called get context. Context type, so 2D or WebGL. So there's only two types. Maybe they added some. Oh, yeah, look, they got new ones in there. Con, a web GPU, which will create a GPU canvas context. That is awesome. You know, they keep getting more and more and more and more. It just goes forever. So we're just going to stick with a 2D context. What am I doing? So it's uh, get context. And that's 2D. Now let's, I'll take what it gave me there. And then uh, I'm going to draw in there. I want to do uh, dot, what is it, fill rect or something like that? Let me see. So once we get the context, Sorry about that. So once we get the context, this when we do get context, it's going to return a, um, a 2D context. So it's uh, it, it leads to the creation of a canvas rendering context 2D. So it's pretty easy to look that up. And these are the um, these are the functions on that object and uh, so there's a fill style i think you set the color uh, the value okay so the the fill style property specifies the color gradient or pattern to use inside shapes all right the default style is black oh so but i don't need it so that's good that would be fine and uh so how come i don't see the can the canvas here what is, uh, I should see a black canvas, right? Let me see. How come I don't see a black canvas? And uh, we got to get this out. Oh, this is broken, right? So this doesn't even, I should see an error in my web page there. How come I don't see an error? This should, uh, it should be a JavaScript error, right? And uh, there it is. Let's see if I reload that. How come I don't see JavaScript error? Oh, oh, because it's, watch, if I do that, then I should get an error, okay? So how do I, just, I can't remember how to do this anymore. I need to save first, then I gotta reload. How come I'm not getting a syntax error? What is going on? And uh, let's see here. Why is that? Oh, that's just undefined. All right, fill rect, what the heck? So the default style is black, so that's good. So maybe what I need to do is um, I got it. I have to draw into the canvas, all right? Uh, so what is it, fill? I can do fill rect, but how do you fill the whole canvas? Clear rect, let me look at that, clear rect. It erases the pixels in the rectangular area by setting them to transparent. 
black. Now this is a warning here. So this clear black doesn't always work the way you want it to. And um, make sure to call begin path before starting to draw new items after calling clear rect. So it's after. So you want to make sure you call begin path. Clear rec may cause unintended side effects if you're not if you're not using paths properly. Make sure to call begin path before starting to draw new items after calling clear rec. Anyway, so do I ever do I need to call clear rec? I don't think I do. I'm not the way I'm going to develop things. I'm not even going to need that. What I want to do is display an image. So. Uh, you know, I need a drawing program. I'm going to create a, what a, What did I used to do? I used to use, um, what was a fire alpaca one time? I used that. Let me just try that. I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to go straight for the design that I'm thinking of, which is to use, just to use images. So I'm going to use do animation and I, I'm going to not have to use clear rec because I want to draw the first thing I'm going to do is draw the background image. And then on top of the background image, I'm going to draw little little animations. So um, anyway, let's do that. So I'm going to do uh, I go to set the size of the file. Let's see. Uh, nah, nah, nah. Edit. Canvas size. I guess I need to create a new file here. And um, what what am I going to do? What's the standard size? I I don't want to. I want to keep it really simple. It's my little website. Four hundred by four hundred. think that'll render on most uh, cell phones. I think, and I'll keep it square. Let me do that. And I want the background to be transparent. That's fine. That's all I have to really think about. And um, I'll just fill that in. And uh, this is the uh, bucket tool here. There, there's a color. It's kind of a nice color. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this into my uh, folder on the desktop here, my little website. And uh, I, I create a new a new folder here for this. Let's see, what's it going to be? A uh, new folder. Come on, man. There we go. I got an old computer here. So I'm going to call this art. This will be my, um, you know, the source of. So if I want to change something, you know, I'm just going to go in there. So I'll save the uh, fire alpaca. I gotta give it a name. Okay, so I'm gonna call this. Um, I'm gonna call it index. Index.mdp. All right. And uh, so now what I need to do is export this. I think as a PNG fits in the following size. No, I don't want to do that. I want to save it like that. So it should be 400 by 400. And uh, let's see, and I'm going to put that, where am I going to put that? I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to call it uh, index.png. That's not really what I want to ultimately use it. I'm going to call it index. I'm going to call it BG for background. Let me do that. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of stuff in there. And um, so it's going to, I'm going to have to break things up. I'll have to um, put things in folders, right? So I'm going to have to make a directory called maybe images. And then I'll, I'll move the, uh, the background into that folder. Got to get organized now. So I have multiple web pages and each, each web page will have a folder. And, uh, and these folders have the, um, 
have their art and so on in there. So now, let me change this to 400 by 400. And then I'm going to draw, I think it's, what was it called again? It was called draw, draw image, something like that. Let me take a look at that. Draw image, there it is. Draw image, and these, this is the syntax. And um, so you have to have an image. And here it is, HTML image. So how do I get an image? Oh, now I remember that. I'm gonna do this. So let's get that image in there. So let's get the image. So I'm gonna get this this background image. I'll call it BG. And um, there's a new image. And I think you pass in the file name. I'm gonna guess that that's the case. And it's in uh, images, and it's called bg.png. All right, let's see if that works. And then, uh, and then in this context, I'm going to draw the image. Sorry, what's that? Draw image, right? Draw image. Is that is that what it was? Draw image. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Draw image. I think if I omit these, they'll go in as zeros. Uh, I like to keep things short, but let's see if I just do BG. Let me see if that, I'll bet you that works. But maybe it doesn't work on all browsers. So just to play it safe, I'll, I'll do that. And uh, save that and nothing. Ah, how come that didn't work? Context 2D, this is the canvas. And let me see. So we have a canvas here. Why does that not show up? And then we have draw image. Now, why does that not show up? How come that doesn't show up? If I go over to elements, do I, I see it here, right? Look at that. That's it. It should render over there, but it's not. It's not rendering. Why does that not render? So I have the background, I get the context, and then I, I try to draw it in there. Maybe it's, oh, I know why. Because I'm calling the draw command before, see this, when I do that, this, uh, this, this, this issue is a separate uh, request it's a it's a it's a separate request so this so before the image is um, loaded that I call draw image but BG is uh, is empty so uh, before I, I need to call draw image after this loads so it, I'll need I'm gonna go with an animation loop eventually I'm gonna do animation so I'll need an, an animation loop so you see, the problem is I call draw image uh, too fast because this hasn't loaded yet. This is a, this is done in a separate um, separate thread. And um, okay, so let me run the animation. So it's get all right. So we're going to use animation loops. We could use timer. Most people, I know my students, they always start with timers, but I like the animation loop. It's, it's cleaner, and I think that's the, that's the way to go. It's more like a game loop. So how do you get the animation loop? Let me see. So uh, what is it? The Web API. What the heck? I forgot how to get the animation loop. So get animation loop, something like that. So let's take a look here. I forgot the name of that animation capture API image capture let me see uh, animation loop 
Look at all this really cool stuff here. Screen capture API, storage access. Oh, this is just incredible. I, I, I hardly know any of this now. This is um, just blowing up with capabilities. Web animations. And uh, here it's going to be get animations using web animations API. What the heck? This is kind of new. Web animations API allows for synchronizing and timing changes to the presentation of a web page. The timing model and the animation model. What? Is, this is pretty cool here and uh, get animations return in an A of animation objects currently in effect in the document should I do that should I learn new stuff holy cow maybe that's what I'm gonna do let me learn something new today this is this is all new and um, uh, let me start with this one U using web animations API let's see what this is all about this this probably saves me from a lot of grunt work than I was doing before. <laughs> Man, this thing is gigantic. I tell you, this thing is... The rest of your life, you could be doing this for sure and, and get 10% of it figured out, maybe. So uh, let's take a look and do some experiments to try to understand what this web animation API is all about. It lets us construct animations and control their playback with JavaScript. <clears throat> and uh, it, it's the API underlies CSS animations, CSS transitions. Oh, yeah, this is the function I was looking for, which is request animation frame. It is one of the most performant ways to animate on the web, letting the browser make its own internal optimizations without hacks, coercion, or window request animation frames. So, oh, so this is an alternative to this request animation frame. So is that what I want to do? Something new? I guess so. All right, let me, this is completely new way to do it. All right, this is a, this is a way to do this that I've never done before. With the Web Animations API, we can move interactive animations from style sheets to JavaScript. Well, all right. I don't want to do that. I don't want to use CSS. I, I do not like CSS. We no longer need to rely on DOM-heavy techniques, such as writing CSS properties. I'm good with that. And scoping classes onto elements to control playback direction. And unlike pure declarative CSS, JavaScript, yeah, I hate you know, I don't like pure declarative CSS. I just have trouble using that. It's so much easier for me to develop using uh, JavaScript. So we set properties dynamically using JavaScript, building custom animation libraries, creating new, creating interactive animations. That's what I want to do. It might be might be the perfect tool for the job. Yeah, I'm psyched, man. I'm I'm ready to buy. All right. So one of the more familiar ways to approach is to start with something that most web developers have played with before. I don't want to start with CSS anim animations. I don't want this. All right. Okay. I don't want to do it like this. Moving to JavaScript. Oh, good. I'm just gonna skip all that. Maybe I should look at it. Let me look at it. I, I shouldn't. I should understand that. All right, here's a tumbling animation. Okay, so there's the animation. Look, you've got this thing moving over here. you got a background. This is rotating, and then it looks like two things are happening. You've got this background that's probably looping, and then you've got this thing rotating in the middle. So just two separate uh, uh, image elements. Notice that the background moves and Alice spins. Her color changes at an offset from her spinning. Oh, yeah, yeah, her color is changing. So yeah. All right, so that's cool. So this is how to do it. So Alice, this is a... Um, 
is that a canvas element? What kind of animal element is that? So that's an ID, right? Right there. So this is an ID, Alice. Is that a canvas element? They don't show the HTML. Get element by ID Alice dot animate. So they're going to explain it down here. So anyway, let's see. So we don't know what kind of an element that is. Is that a div? Is that canvas? I don't know. But here, but they're attaching a CSS called animation, Alice tumbling. So Alice tumbling refers to this. And it's infinite, so it's just a loop. And three seconds, I guess. I don't know what that means. And uh, it's linear, so, all right. This is, a, what, a background color or something? Rotate. Yeah, just, just stuff I hate CSS. I know I shouldn't hate it. And uh, if you love it, that's great. That's, hold on to that love, because that'll help you a lot. In the keyframes block, we can see, all right. So there's this thing called keyframes. So they have something called keyframes. And uh, all right, moving it to JavaScript. Let's create the same animation with the Web Animations API. The first thing we need to do is to create a keyframe object. So it's an array. And so there's three, I guess there's three keyframes, right? Is that what that means? Here we're using an array containing multiple objects. Each object represents a key from the original CSS. However, unlike CSS, the web animations doesn't need to explicitly be told percentages along the animation for each key to appear at. It will automatically divide the animation into equal parts based on the number of keys you give it. This means that a keyframe object with three keys will play the middle key 50% of the way through each loop, unless told otherwise. A keyframe with three keys will play the middle key 50% of the way through each loop of the animation, unless told otherwise. What the heck does that mean? When we want to explicitly set a key's offset from the other keys, we can specify an offset directly in the object. In the above example, to make sure that Alice's color changes at 30%, not 50%, for the color change, we're giving it the offset. So, you know, they could have gave a simpler beginning. They could have done a hello animation example here. Instead, they're throwing in the kitchen sink here with these offsets. So I'm going to try to ignore that for now and whittle down to something that's simpler. There should be at least two keyframes representing the starting and ending states of the animation sequence. Oh, that's where the 50% comes from. So if you have three keyframes, it means there's a start and an end, and there's one in the middle. So there's two images in the animation. You know, each one taking 50% of the loop time. And, um, okay. So, if your keyframe list has only one entry, then it will throw a not supported error. Okay. That makes sense. So, you got to have at least two. So if you only have two, that means just nothing is moving because it's just going to freeze on, on one frame. So keys are equally spaced by default unless you use an offset key. You yeah, know, that's cool. That's cool. Because I was doing that, you know, in my coding when I did it manually with get animation frame, I, I was allowing that generality. And um, so here it's all sort of built in and everything. So we need to create an object of timing properties corresponding to the, to the values in Alice's animation. I'm going to take a break in a minute here, but this is really interesting. I'm, I am so psyched to learn this right now. Totally. This is, I'm really into this because I've done so much work on animating uh, using that. Um, and this is going to 
cut down on how much code I have to write, and I'll be more concise and much easier, faster to, to develop these Canvas apps that I've been kind of dreaming of, working on for a couple of years now. So we have a um, so we have a keyframes, and then we have um, something called a uh, timing property. So an object of timing property. So it's just an object with um, you know settings, duration, iterations, and I'm sure they all have default settings. Iterations, so just keep it going forever. Duration, that's each frame of animation is three seconds. That's milliseconds, I'm sure. So we're going to have uh, timing. I know this is going to be needed. I'm going to bang this out real fast because I'm excited, but I want to take a break at the same time. And uh, I don't know about this. Two spaces for indent. I guess that's all right. And this is Alice timing, and I'm just going to call it timing for now. It's three seconds. Okay, I'll take that. I'll do that. I'm going to use my style a little here. Yeah, okay. Like, they put a comma. They put a comma here. Isn't that interesting? And uh, I guess you could just leave it in there. And uh, it's a little sloppy looking in a way, but I guess it's all right. It's kind of gives a consistency because there's no item after that comma. So it'll be like an, an undefined item. And I guess the Java engine doesn't mind that. Okay, so I'll accept that because it gives me a nice visual on that. And uh, then we're going to need these. Um, we're going to need the keyframe object. Well, this is not. So a keyframe object is just an array. All right. So that's the uh, the name of the animation. So I keep doing that. So we got this timing, and then we're going to have a, and we're going to call this. Um, I'm going to call it Annie. And uh, we have this transform, and then we have this color. This is, we've got to get rid of this. This is uh, translate. I think maybe, let me see. So that background, how am I going to write the background in there? I think what I'll do, I'll have with this image, I'm going to have to set the uh, the background. Let me do that. Watch this. This is going to be... I'll just do it up here. This canvas uh, is going to have a, um, what is it, background image, CSS style. So I'm going to do uh, style equals, is it background image? I can't remember now. And that's uh, images. Images slash bg dot png. I'm just guessing what this is. Background image. I wonder if that even works. Let's see. And then uh, we we'll just comment this out for now. Nope. Oh, what the heck? All right. Is it different? I'm used to using Mac a lot of times. And the keyboard is different. Comment that out. Save. Reload. Nothing. So this style is not right. So what's the style background image CSS background image? How do you set background image? The background image property. I think I got that right. Oh, it has a URL here. All right. So you got to do it like that. All right. So this is, sorry, I keep doing that. This is, uh, 
this is a URL. You have to use this, I don't know what they call it, a CSS function. I, I don't know what they call that. And um, I'm going to need to put, I'll use uh, apostrophes in there. So that's got to be different than uh, the quotes, right? So they, they don't get messed up. All right, so that's the background image. And it worked. Okay, except uh, the width and all that. So I'm going to do uh, width equals 400. And uh, height equals uh, 400. I'll just code that right in there. I'm going to make it real simple. And I want to center that up. And just real quickly, I'll just go ahead and do that. So the canvas is, you know, I don't know. I just probably I should do it like this. This just to keep things cleaner. I should probably do this. This style here. Let me do that just just to keep this element smaller. And. Um, I wonder, I think I can leave that out, right? Can I leave that out? I'll leave it. Can I just do that? Right. Maybe I'll leave it like this for now. So, canvas. I'm trying to remember how to do this. And I don't like this indentation. I don't need all that indentation. Let me see if I can use uh, shift tab. It worked. I like the four spaces though. I do like that more than two. And I guess I can make those settings. So this is, uh, it still comes up red. Okay. And you know, setting the width and height here is different than setting the width and height of CSS. But you could do it in CSS and maybe that's what I should do. Oh, let me go ahead and do that to make it even simpler to look at, I guess. And uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Let me do that. And I do that to a CSS property. Okay, I'll leave it like that. So the width is 400. And the height is, uh, is going to be 400. So uh, these are going in as CSS properties. That is still working. And uh, now, what else did I want to do? I want to center that up. Okay, so this is going to be... The easiest way to center, I think, is to use uh, flow, right? What do they call that? Flex? Let me see. CSS flex, something like that. Flexbox? No. Flow? Is it Flexbox? I can't remember now, man. I'm an expert and I can't remember stuff. Flow layout. Uh, what is CSS flow? Maybe there's an easier way to do this, but this in the old days, which is not that old again, this was the easiest how to center using uh, CSS flow. All right, let's just how to center using CSS flow. Let's see, like that. How do you center in a uh, text align? How to center in using text align? Is there a way to float center? Input the center in CSS. Uh, margin auto, display flex. Uh, how to center a button in CSS. I want the simplest way to do this. Centering both horizontally and vertically was difficult before Flexbox. I'll bet you this gives me the, the simplest solution. That's what I want. Dead center. So you have this thing called a container. 
and the container has a display that's set to flex and then all this here okay so watch this this is going to be cool so this is my container and uh, I'm going to put that in here that's it right there so the canvas is my container and sorry about that and then we have the items inside the container oh, oh, oh this is a div i'll put the canvas inside of a div and the item in the container will be um let me see we have an item here so this class item has nothing so it's all in the container okay keep doing that so really this thing is just a just a container it's a div <clears throat> id equals uh, container no that doesn't do it that doesn't complete it for me all right so that's gonna let me close that off heck div all right so uh, here we go let me do this make it real short of that so this uh, container is uh, going to have these uh, flex settings and the, the, the canvas is just an item inside the container. I think that's how it's done. Yeah, that's it. So let's see if that works. Look at that. But it doesn't center it vertically. How do you center it vertically? Horizontally and vertically. That's because they give a height here. And uh, I think I need to specify a, um, a height in the container. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say the height of my container is 100%. Let's, I'm just guessing here. And that works. Look at that. Got it in there. Okay. It's my little website. And maybe 400 pixels is not enough. I, I don't know. Maybe that's too small. Well, look at the dimensions here. 375, some sort of default. What does that say? iPhone SE, that's like an old iPhone. And uh, 375, that's not very wide, is it? It doesn't give you a lot to work in. Maybe I'll go to 300, 360. That's what I'm gonna do, something like that. Maybe 360 is, I like that number. 360. It's going to be really small, right? Make it real small. It fits inside this iPhone. And um, we can give a different background here. So background color. So I'll just do, um, uh, what is it? The background, the container's background. So it's going to call it background dash color. And I'm um, going to make it black. There we go. You know, I don't really like that. It's too dark. Gray. You know, I like it white. So, well, let's let me try light gray. Light gray. With, it, with an A. Or an E. I don't know which one is right. I know there's an English and an American, but whatever. It's a little better, but I kind of just like it white. You know, I'm going to just leave it white. Just to hurt your eyes, but there we go. And um, actually, I could just give it this, this color, but I'm going to change the background. And uh, let's say incorporate that into the animation sequence. I might do that depending on that. 
All right, so that's done. Oh, now we want to bring that script back in. So I'm psyched. I'm going to learn this animation API. So we don't need this, but we'll need this later. We'll need these. Uh, we'll need this image loading later on when we do animations. So, and uh, but for, so for now, I'm just going to uh, put that out, and then this. I'm going to get rid of that. And um, what I can do there is um, I could do this constant w equals uh, canvas dot width. Is it, will that even come up? I wonder if that works. Constant uh, h equals canvas uh, dot height. I wonder if that even works. And uh, I, I, I'm guessing that I'm going to need those numbers, but maybe not. And uh, let's see. So maybe down here, I'm going to do uh, W. It's not defined because it's not global. Canvas dot width 300, but it should be 360, right? It should be 360, so that's not working. That's because of the way I set that. See, if I do this, watch this. Now, I've had to deal with this before. If I do... Um, you know, width equals, I'm not going to give it quotes, it's 360, it's the value, and height equals 360, like that. Oh, no, it is in quotes, I think, pretty sure it's in quotes. And um, is it in quotes? Hmm. I think it's in quotes. And then I'm going to get rid of this. Just in case I need it, I'm going to put it in like this. This is the proper way to comment out CSS. They don't use the line-based commenting. So I reload that. And then if I do watch this canvas dot width, which should come out to be 360. See the difference between setting it in the CSS or setting it as HTML attributes? So it's just, it's, that's, it's something I learned a while ago. So it's just the way it's done. Uh, I mean, that's just, it's shorter text. It, the, the code is, can be made more compressed because I just refer to it like that. So I don't even need this W and H yet. Uh, you know, so I could always just do canvas.width, canvas.height, if I even need it. And I think I will need it. I'm probably going to need these, but I'll comment, comment out for now. All right. Let's just finish it up. I'm going to take a break, but I want to finish this. This is done. And how to center, that's done. Flow layout, that's done. Uh, background property, that's done. Back to uh, the tutorial. And, uh, you know, we're going to need, we're going to need something here. We're going to need this. Uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to create like a, a dot and uh, like have it move or something like that. So I'm going to pause and uh, take my break and then maybe I'll do a drawing and save you some time and then I'll dig back into learning this uh, this animation API. I'm going to try to remember how I do this. All right. Uh, I had a little break. Now it's back to my little website. And I went ahead and made these um, images here. And so this is for an animation I want to do. So each one shows uh, the state of the animation. Okay. So now... 
what am I going to do? I don't need this anymore. I think I saved it already. I'm just going to close this out. But um, I exported those images into the images folder here. And um, those are the numbers. This is the background. So this one I already got. I don't need this one. And then I have, um, these are to go over the background. That's what I have here. So these are the numbered frames. And um, yeah, I'll just leave those names as is, I guess. I'll just to keep it simple. So that's done. And come back to here. Then here we go. What is it? Where am I? Mm -hmm. All right, so took another sip of coffee. So the duration is in milliseconds. Here it is, 3,000 milliseconds. And uh, not 3S, right? So set timeout and request animation frame. Like those, the web animations API only takes milliseconds. So we work in milliseconds. So iterations is the name, not iteration count. So I don't get that. Uh, there's a number of differences between terminology used in CSS animations and web animations. For instance, web animations doesn't use the string infinite. Oh, it uses infinity. Oh, okay. It uses the JavaScript keyword. So this is a keyword in JavaScript representing a something that's comparable to numbers, I guess. And instead of timing function, we use easing. All right. And uh, the default animation, unlike CSS animations, where the default animation timing function is ease, in the web animations API, the default easing is linear, which is what we want. So good. So we go with the default. So now it's time to bring them both together with the element.animate method. So we do get element by ID Alice, and we say animate, and then we give this. All right. And boom, the animation starts playing. See the finished product on code pen. Uh, it's too slow. The animate method can be called on any any DOM element, all right, that could be animated with CSS. Oh, oh, oh. so the canvas is not animated with CSS. It can be written in several ways. Instead of making objects for keyframes and timing properties, we could just pass the values in directly like this. All right, so we just, just the transform like that. And uh, you know what? I may this may not be useful to me. Not the way that I plan to do animations. So um, I'm trying to make it easy for the artist to uh, to do animations. So it's just a frame by frame thing, and you know, without having to do translations. Basically, I, mean, I don't need translate. I don't need this. I need, um, what's more, if we only want to specify the duration of the animation, not its iterations, there's no, so uh, so this would be animating an image inside of a div. Uh, all right. This is totally not my, you know, what a waste. This is not what I need. Not at all. This is not going to work for me. Holy cow, now we can use the animation play method to run it whenever we're ready. So yeah, if you wanted to do animations like this, then you could do it. Um, but this is not going to work for what I want to do. So that means I'm going to come back to here, and this is what I was looking for, request animation frame. 
So that was interesting to see what was going on there, but uh, ultimately I don't need that. And uh, here is request animation frame, and we pass in a callback, and that is that. Okay, so uh, that means we're going to need, oh yeah, and I remember this, uh, this business here. I'm not going to need that. Um, I'm going to do it like this. Watch this. These images, we're going to need the images. So this is how I do it. In the uh, style element, I have uh, image. Is it image or is it IMG? I can't remember now. I think it's IMG. Right? <clears throat> and the image will be um, display. Is it hidden? Display none, that's it. So I do, this is a trick I use just to, so I can load the images and have the JavaScript wait for loading of the image to complete. Then I don't have to load it using that, this mechanism here. So I'm, I'm gonna just basically cut this mechanism out just to make it real, real simple. So I'm going to show you, show you, show myself, and develop a way to um, to do this in a really simple way. So we turn off the display of these images, and then we have these image elements. Image source equals uh, images slash zero zero one dot png. So there's one right there. Can I do it like that? I think so. Let me try that. I don't remember how many I had. So that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five. I'm gonna guess I had five. Well, it's easy to check. I have five. And I have this background image, which I already set up here. And, uh, maybe I'm gonna change that. Hmm. I might change that. I'll leave it alone for now. And then uh, let's see here. I'm going to save all of those. Okay. And then <clears throat> now this isn't going to be needed. And this is not going to be needed. But I need to get the 2D context. I definitely need that. And then uh, probably not going to need this. Just get rid of that. And then here we're going to draw the image. So now before, remember, when we, we weren't able to draw the image because it wasn't loaded. Uh, those images were not loaded. But this time we're going to load it. So the image, I, I'm going to use that trick here, right, that this... ID goes into the global namespace. So I'm going to use that trick here, and I'm going to say um, ID equals, and I'm going to call this, um, uh, I'll call it I underscore zero zero one. So image zero zero one. That's that's my style. That's how I'm going to do it. All right. It's the pattern of the naming. Uh, uh, the naming convention, I underscore. That's my naming convention. And this will be two. Whoops. This is going to be um, two, three, four, five. And I want to do the same thing up here. This is... Uh, well, no, I don't need that. That's all right, just like that. So now I have these images. So now when I, when, if I want to draw that, I just refer to it as I underscore zero zero one. And let's do that, and there it is. Look at that. Now this uh, request uh, animation frame, request animation frame, and then you have the callback here, which is uh, 
it's going to be um, a function. So we're going to pass in a function, and it's going to be the, uh, the animation function. So we're going to call that, uh, what are we going to call that? Request animation frame. I might try doing this in a new way. So we're basically going to pass in a function here. And I'll just call it like that. And uh, so this function is uh, is not going to take any um, arguments. I don't need that. Oh, I, I should put that in there. All right, four spaces. So here, when we request the animation frame, we're gonna we're gonna draw that image right there. Look at that. Oh, wait, watch this. I'm gonna try to do this in a really tricky, tricky way here. So here's the uh, the problem is this. Um, this will work, right? But it's going to keep drawing it over and over again, 60 times a second, right? And um, but this will only draw it once. This only draws it once. Uh, so uh, we keep drawing that over and over again. And then we have 60 times a second. So we can have a counter here. Watch this. Watch this. This is cool. So... I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this frame one, or frame zero, no, frame one, we're going to call it frame one. This is frame one. And then uh, if, so request animation frame, so this gets things started. And then uh, watch this, this is, I'm just going to play around with this. <laughs> Just going to play around with this. All right. So this is going to get called again. Watch. This is going to be tricky. I got this idea in my head here. I'm not going to explain it. You'll see it. You'll see this. So it's going to be a little loopy. So we're going to have a um, counter, which is a, like steps, right? I'll do it like this. Let like steps, step equals 60, no, 10. No, I'm going to do it faster, 8. So 8 steps, so it's each 60 frames a second. That's the standard for this request animation frame, but I, it's not, I think that's just a convention that people use, but the other brow browsers are, free to use whatever frame rate they want, but I've never seen anything other than 60 frames per second. So just for now, I'm going to assume the fixed frame rate that's consistent across all browsers at 60 frames per second. Let's make that assumption and because I'm just playing around and it's just for fun. All right. Uh, all right, so if we're going to do this, if minus minus step, once we hit zero, once we hit zero, then we're going to call, then we're going to do this. Once we hit zero, I'm going to put the brace right there. If we hit zero, I'm going to reset steps to eight. And then, um, and then I'm going to request animation frame. Uh, frame two, watch this. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is fun, 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 fun. So we start with um, F one. We start with frame one, right? And we set step to, uh, we start with step equals eight. And then we set frame one here. It's already set to eight. 
and um, it's kind of redundant. I'll, I'll just leave that out, I guess. So uh, we reset step to eight. Then we go request animation frame F2. Then here, um, else, we're going to uh, draw this. And um, uh, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Watch this. Now I'm figuring stuff out. I'm just going to call F2 here. Because I mean, I'm already inside the callback for request animation frame. So that means we just invoke F2. And then here we, um, we draw the image. And then we call, uh, call request animation frame F1, which is the self here of that function. Yeah, we'll, we'll clean this up, but this is essentially how we're going to do it. And then we have uh, function F2. And that's uh, it's the same thing if it calls F3. And this is, uh, you know, the second thing. And this would be F2, right? So, yeah, we're going to have to fix this. This is, too, this is not going to work for every case. But for now, let's... I've never done it like this. This is just a, basically these, um, this is basically each frame is a function. So, so here I'm using functions to uh, kind of represent frames. So this is, I've never done it like this. Let's do, uh, this is a three and this is a three. But there's a lot of code duplication, so we gotta kill that. We gotta figure out how to get rid of the code duplication. But just to see it work, I'm gonna do this. All right. So let's see. This is uh, is it F5? Hmm. How many? We had five of these. I think we had five. Is that right? We have five. Yeah, we had five. And let's do that. And then when we get to the last frame, so these are frames. This is F5. And, uh, but it's, it's not going to end. I mean, this is where it ends. So we just draw, and we're done the animation. This is the end of the animation. So we draw at five. So it's a one-time animation that stops on the last image. So it's going to run immediately. Look at that. <laughs> oh, wait, what happened? Uh, I don't have all green. What the heck? I thought I had all green in there. Uh-oh. I got personal details coming on the screen here. Yeah. Okay. So there's a bug here. This uh, this draw image doesn't get called. So uh, it's down right there. That's the problem. I, I, I didn't call F5. So let's try it. There we go. And that's what I wanted. But I wanted to do this on a click. Right, I wanted to be able to click and then have this thing run. So this would be like this. So this request animation frame will be on a on a click. So how do I do a click? So and, and you know what the heck? I want to be able to where is it here? Uh my little website. So here I wanted to um, get the coordinates of this um, this guy right there. So I want to be able to the user to click here and then activate the animation. That's how I want to do it. So 
I just need to get these coordinates. Um, no, not that. Let's see. This is draw tool is a brush. And this should be what the heck? Layer two. That's the center of it, roughly the center of a circle. So the coordinate is 180, comma two two hundred, say. 180 comma 200, just to rough it out. Oh, it's 180 comma 212. 183 comma 212. All right, all right. 183 comma 212. That's the center of a circle. Uh, so uh, there's going to be this uh, click function here. I'll do it like this. This is my click handler, and uh, we're going to get the um, an event. So we're going to get something like that. So there's going to be some kind of an on click. So it'll be <clears throat> this will start it off. So when we click, we're going to start off the animation, okay? But only if the click happens in that circle. So how do I grab that? So I'm going to grab clicks on the whole document. And um, we're on the canvas. I can get clicks on the canvas. That's what I need to do. So this click here... I got to do this. Uh, let me do it like this. So let let e equal null. And then uh, when the when I get this click, then uh, this is the click event. So I'm just going to I'll use this as my I don't know just to make it event, we'll call it event. And um, I'm trying to remember how to do all this. So I'm going to just take the event and set it to E. I just want to inspect what that thing looks like, okay? And I, I don't want to do anything yet. So I need to uh, trigger trigger this, this event. So I'm going to do alert. I'll do it like this is even easier. Let me just do this. I don't need that. I don't need this. All right, just alert E. See what that looks like. And um, how do I get that? I think the body element. So it's a document that's global dot body dot set. Event handler, set event listener, set event listener, click event, and that'll be, um, and I'll call this click function. So let's see if that works. I, I don't know. Let's see. So if I click on the body, oh no, it should be um, canvas. This is uh, get element by ID. I don't need that. I already have canvas as a global. Is it set event listener? Is that right? Or add event listener, Jeez, That's what it is. Add event listener on the canvas element. And there it is. Okay, so I click, and there's the alert. Okay, it's an object, it's a pointer event. And is it like X? Do they just have an X there? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. 477. Okay. So that X, this is only 360 by 360. So that's 
must be, you know, in this whole space here. Uh, so, uh, so it would be something like this canvas. So I get it. I want to go from, you know, the page coordinate system to this canvas coordinate system. So click, click event. Let me see if I can get that um, real quickly there. Oh yeah, this is not what I need. So I'm going to do um, web APIs. So add, let's see, what's this going to be? Um, DOM events, that's probably what it is. DOM interfaces. Event. This is click. Examples. So this is um, I know this is not the right place to be. These are HTML element as a click web ATI. So I'm going to go back to this and uh, interfaces document element event Hmm. Interface is based on event. Below is a list of interfaces which are based on the main event interface, which with links to their respective documentation in the MDM API reference. So yeah, there would be click event, something like that. Let's see, custom event, fetch. What doesn't have click event here? No, all event interfaces have names which end in event. All right. So, I wonder why, where's this click event? How come it doesn't show up there? And uh, pointer event, user interface event, touch event. I like that. I might go with touch event, current target, default, prevented, all this stuff. This is uh, pretty good. This is event type. This is event target. The reference to the object, which the event was originally dispatched. So this event target, this should be, um, you know, the canvas. I'm going to test that theory. And uh, so once we click on this canvas, we are going to say uh, E, which is the event, dot uh, target. And remember the width and the height. So I'm going to go width. That should be 360. Let's see if that, if that works. Or reload, click, 360. Yeah. So this gives me, and the reason I wanted to do that is because I could get the coordinates of this um, upper left hand corner here. So to do that, I need to um, <clears throat> I got to split off this a little bit. So I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to get the coordinates of that upper left hand corner. live streaming all right so maybe i don't need that yet let me um this click event or touch event that's what i want to look at is the um uh, this touch event i wonder if that's uh it represents a ui event which is sent when the state of contacts with a touch sensitive surface changes but you know 
touch object. I want this uh, UI event. Uh, UI event derives from event. Obouse event, touch event. So it's mouse event, that's what it is. But I want touch events and mouse events both. What's the input event? Oh, well, maybe that's uh, nothing. So the mouse event represents the user interacting with a pointing device, such as a mouse. Common events using this interface include click and this. So this is the mouse event and um, client x, the x coordinate of the mouse pointer in local coordinates, in other words, DOM content. So this will be coordinates in the canvas. So client x, I think that's what we want. So client x, uh, let's do that. So it's target dot, we don't need target. It's just client e dot client x. All right, that's going to do it. So we don't even have to know on the page where this thing is. Watch, this should be the middle. So if I click in the middle, it should be like 180. Okay, let's see. 495, got it wrong. What the heck? Fortnite client X. So I don't understand that, what they're talking about in local DOM content coordinates. Uh, layer X, the horizontal coordinate of the event relative to the current layer. Movement X, relative to the position of the last mouse move. Page X, the mouse pointer relative to the whole document. I thought that's what I was getting. That's what I think they're giving to me now. This is page X. So this is client X. And um, plus new line plus e dot page x let's see what the what that looks like i'm trying to get 180 out of this that's the middle see this client x and page x are the same thing so this is not giving me what i need there so that means I might need the, um, ha -la -la, the, the position of the, of the canvas element. You know, I need to know the position of the canvas element in the, in the page. Relative, related target, the secondary target for the event, screen X. The X coordinate of the mouse pointer in global screen coordinates. I mean, that's what I'm getting. I'm getting screen X, right? So let me just test that. Out. Test that theory. The heck. Screen X. I still think I'm on a Macintosh. So this should be screen X. So these are all the same. And I, I want them to be different, but they aren't. So I'm going to reload that. It should all be the same. Oh, no, no. Screen X is giving me the 180 that I want. What the heck? OK, I'm not reading the docs correctly, I guess. Global screen coordinates. Doesn't sound like global screen coordinates to me. So, I don't know what they're doing. Mouse event dot X, alias for client X. I 
I don't get it. It doesn't look like screen coordinates. Offset X. The X coordinate of the mouse pointer relative to the position of the padding edge of the target. Relative to the padding edge of the target node. Offset X. Hmm. That's kind of what I want, right? Oh, sorry, I keep doing that. It's offset X. I think that's, maybe that's, I want something that's going to work in a general case. So it should be offset X, I think is, uh, is a good one to use. So this is um, offset X. All right. Try to get 180 in there, right in the middle. You see, oh, look, this is different because of padding. What the hell? Padding, some padding there. All right. I'm going to get rid of that padding. This, uh, this is the container. It's the canvas. Padding is zero. Maybe that's good enough. Let's see if I got... Um, Yeah, these, these are still different. Look at that. What the heck? Why are those different? Padding. What if it did margin? Different, but they're closer together. What if I did this? Click there. They're even farther apart. How about I click up here? This should be zero, zero, zero. So the X should be like a zero. So this, this 11 is um, closer to what I want. And this 147 is something I don't understand. So it's that last one. That's the one I want, this offset X. That's the one that I want. And what do they say that is? It's the x-coordinate of the mouse pointer relative to the position of the padding edge of the target node. Relative to the padding edge of the target node. And I think that... Um, I don't know. I don't think I have to even say this. I, I'll leave it in there. So I don't want to think about it. And so this is really what we want. E dot offset x. So it looks like this. So if so I want to know if it's in this circle, right? So basically, we have um, the circle radius. What is my circle radius? So this is the center, which is 183 to 12. And then if I go all the way out to, say, like there, it gets out to... Um, x equals 230. All right. So 230, uh, so that's a, a radius of, um, of what? The radius of is what? Is uh, 230 uh, minus uh, 183, okay? So the radius is what? The radius is... Uh, 17 plus 30, which is 47 or 50. Okay. So I have 50 pixel radius. All right. So this is what we're going to do. So if pixel radius is 50, right? So if um, E dot offset X times e dot offset x. I'm squaring x. And then I'm going to do the same thing with y. So this is the distance formula. So this will be the distance formula. And then you take the square root of that. But that's just to save some...
computation, I'll just leave it like that, and that should be less than 50 times 50, and that's the radius squared, okay? So if it's less than radius squared, then that means we're in the circle, and then I'll just do this. I'll say alert, hit, all right? So let's do that. Oop. Oh, that's all right. Not a problem. So this is alert, and it's a, I'll call it a hit, all right? Otherwise, we don't do anything. I did this wrong. This is totally wrong. So the, it should be um, const, I'm going to do this, dx equals, it's this 183 here. It should be um, dx is 183 minus e dot offset x. I, I didn't do the distance formula correctly. I, I forgot to use the, the origin of the circle. All right, there we go. So that's that. And then, uh, and then dy is going to be what 212 and uh, that's offset y all right so you're going to get this distance formula so this is dx uh, times dx and this is you gotta if you don't get this you gotta look up the distance uh, formula you know it's a geometry problem and uh, there it is. So that's the hit. So if it's uh, if we're in the circle, we're gonna say hit. All right, let's do that. And all right, let's try it. So that's a hit, and this should be a miss. That's a miss. Okay. So, but also, you know what? It's not show. I. I need to start by rendering the circle. So kind of messed that up. That's uh, this is a decrementing step. So basically, I need to render that. Um, I mean, we could just do it in here. This is a cheap way to do it, but let's do it. So this, uh, let's do this. So we just want to do this once just to get it to show up. All right, there it is. And now we can, uh, we can hit, hit it and then we can miss it. Okay, that's a miss. Oop. What happened? I just, what the heck? It, it still works, right? Why did it zoom in like that? How come I zoomed in? Huh. If I double click on that, I get a zoom. Hey, that's cool. All right. I don't know. I guess that work on a phone? Maybe. That's, uh... All right. So anyway, we don't want to hit. That's not what we want. What we want is to, um, is to uh, run the animation. But we want to do a little more than that. We have to turn off. Oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. So these are these animation frames. The last thing we do is we draw all green. All right. No, that's, or that's done. Okay. So here, when... Uh, so basically, this this ad event listener, I'm gonna get rid of that because we can't. We don't want to keep the event listener active, so we have to take that off. So this is remove event listener. Now let's see. I think it's remove. We'll test that. Let's do that. Okay. Let's do it. 
this is not a hit right out here but in in the middle it's a hit look at that is that beautiful and then this should do nothing yeah okay so i'm in there in the event listener so that's it i got that i got it and uh, of course that's not you know i don't know, maybe if i do another click i could maybe i can reverse the animation i'm going to make it more interesting all right so let's um one last thing to do i mean i'm pretty happy with what i have so far maybe i should stop it there I think because it's getting to be long and just tinkering is, um, I could just keep tinkering. So is that enough fun for me today? I was going to do, no, I'll do one more thing, which is I don't want it just to show once. I want to be able to reverse the animation. And also I got to figure out a system to reduce, to um, eliminate all this um, duplicate code. This is a lot of duplicate code. But I, I, the concept is there, you know, that these are frames and um, that a function, a frame is represented as a, a callback function that's passed to this um, request animation frame of function. So, and um, so when we reverse, uh maybe i should stop there that's enough fun for today yeah i better just stop and do other things all right if you if anybody listened to this all the way to the end i i hope that it was um enjoyable i listen to people when they they do streaming and they do long streams and i just get into their their mindset and I, I absorb things that way and you know I have a lot of experience coding and learning you know I'm kind of a learning machine and uh, so you know and I, I know how to do this solve uh, problems like this so anyway enough of that and I will um, close it at this point so farewell